Day 721. Sandra died last night. I'm not sure from what. It looks something like that fever I heard about a few months ago. But there were other factors involved. I gave her almost everything that was left in the medicine chest. It seemed to help for a few days, but then she started to get some sores on her that I couldn't stop. It started on her neck, and it wasn't long before she was almost covered in them. The screaming, I can still hear her screams echoing down the corridors. I couldn't bring myself to end her life. I loved her too much, but I was ready to. She stopped screaming yesterday morning. Her breath got very shallow, and then she just drifted away. It's still not safe to go outside. At least I don't think it is. That's what the gauges on the wall say at least. I'll put her body in one of the far back rooms, but I'll put her favorite dress on her first. I'll need to be quick about it. Sometimes the smell from that room is horrific. I think the air recharges are about to fail. If they do, then it won't matter what it's like out there. I won't have a choice. I'll have to leave. There's still more food than I could eat in a lifetime. Most of it I wouldn't have bought at the grocery store if I had a choice. But there's not much I can do about that. Freeze-dried stuff mostly. The water still comes out of the main pipes. I still don't know how. It could be radioactive or have something else wrong with it. Maybe that's why Sandra died and John. I can't say. It really doesn't matter. I don't have any choice. It's the only water I have. Somehow the lights are still on also. If there's a generator room, we never did find it. Maybe behind one of those blast doors we could never open. I don't know. I do know that if they ever go out though, I'll be in complete darkness. There's no window down here. The last of the batteries died out over a year ago. And we never did find any candles, which was strange, because there's an entire carton of Strike Anywhere matches in one of the storerooms. Adam and Linda were the last two of the six of us to show up at the meeting place that day. They said they had to go and pick up the babysitter themselves. Something about her parents' car had broken down. The six of us had planned this trip for over a year. All of us friends from as far back as grade school. You couldn't find a closer group of friends than we were. Only John had been up this far into the mountains before, and even he had never hiked to where we were headed. September started to thin out quite a lot by the afternoon of the second day. The granite cliffs didn't allow much to grow up here. No cell phone reception. In fact, Adam was the only one who brought a phone along, just in case. People think differently when they have children. We were three days into our hike. Everyone was having a great time, but it was time to turn back and head home. We had all gone through what I called the pandemic. The supposed deadly virus that swept the planet about three years ago. I never paid it much attention. It was nothing more than an inconvenience for Sandra and me. I've never been one to trust the government, and when they started to offer incentives to take their shots and boosters, well, it just seemed to drive the point home that something was amiss and all that. John and Emily didn't talk about it much, and there really wasn't a reason to, but Adam and Linda wore the mask nearly everywhere caught the jab and all the boosters. They followed all the new mandates and felt safer in doing so. Like I said, people think differently when they have kids. We all watched as the world started to seem to turn itself upside down. The militant homosexual community attempting to impose their ideologies on everyone, the government seeming to take, or at least trying to take all the power for themselves. Corrupt leaders in nearly every nation the WEF trying to tell us that we would own nothing and be happy. We watched as the currencies of the world began to crumble because of the ever-rising inflation as they brought in their digital currencies, food shortages, riots and protests across the planet. And it seems like every day there was some channel that warned us of the coming nuclear war. The six of us just wanted to get away from it all for a week, go to a place where all the bad news couldn't reach us. Maybe we were just trying to pretend that the world would be all right when we returned. When we saw the explosions, we stood there staring in disbelief. We all had decided to just get as far away as possible from everything that was happening, take a break from the world destroying itself. Now we were watching it happen. We were only about 10 miles as the crow flies from the vehicles, but it was still a three-day journey back. The terrain was rugged, but we had no choice. We would die if we just sat there. We had to get moving. 
That's when we found the door. I still don't know why it was open, who put this place here, or what happened to them. All I know is that, when we came upon it, it was shelter from what was coming, and so we went inside. There were gauges inside. Most of them I still don't know what their purpose is, but some of them were obvious. Humidity levels, temperature, oxygen, quality inside and out, and one that showed the radioactive levels outside. A few minutes after we stepped inside, that one spike off the dial, we found a ham radio that we could pick up a word or two from occasionally. Linda sat by it almost constantly. The day she heard that the sea we all lived in had taken a direct hit from a thermonuclear bomb was the day she died inside. Five days later, she hung herself in one of the storage rooms. Adam left five weeks later. Going out into wall was most certainly a radioactive death. The four of us didn't do much more than exist for the next two years. John and I went outside three or four times to the highest peak we could find to survey the distant horizon. Nothing but scorched earth for as far as we could see. With only the gas masks to protect us from the elements, it didn't take long to figure out what was wrong with John. When he died of radiation poisoning, I stopped going outside. Linda fell ill to something about six weeks later, and I still don't know what it was, but I'm starting to get the idea it was the same thing my lovely wife died from. Something that could only be explained in the book I found buried under a bunch of boxes in one of the storage rooms. I had been reading that Bible for almost six months. I tried to get Sandra to listen to some of what I had been reading in it, as much as I could understand, but she refused to listen. Her parents had been devout Roman Catholics, and it really damaged her ideas about God. She saw him as vengeful, but that's not what I found in the book. And I had started to admit to myself that if that's what was going on out there in the world, well, we had it coming. I never was able to get a reply from anyone over the ham radio. I don't know if they couldn't hear me, or if it was able to receive only. But some of the things I had heard were just too much of a coincidence, too close to what the Bible said. Massive earthquakes, some types of flying creatures with tails that stung people, people not able to die, water turning to blood, billions of people dead. Everything that was written about these days was happening out there. It was too much of a coincidence to be anything else. If this part of the book was true, the rest of it must be true as well. I'm not going to stay here any longer. There's nothing to stay for. I'll put the gas mask on pack as much food and water as I can carry, and the Bible. I'll pray to the God of it before I go. Maybe he will hear me. Maybe he'll show me what I'm supposed to do. Maybe I can find someone out there that can explain to me what it means, what the reason for us having this book is. There has to be someone out there that can teach me the truths of this Bible. <laughs>